Hey folks, what's going on? One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Just doing a little quick little check here. So I'm just looking, just looks like we got one person so far. It will officially be 10 o'clock in about a minute. <laughs> Today's book is Hoop Queen. So we still got about a minute, so we'll just wait and see how things go. So while we're waiting, yep, still got a minute. <laughs> while we're waiting, as you see, I got my basketball shirt on. Hopefully basketball will be back soon, sometime in the near uh, to immediate future. Um, it is now officially 10 o'clock, but I'm going to give a chance for some folks to check in. Hello again, Keika. Good to see you. Good to see you, Adaris. Can I reply? I can't reply just yet, Adaris, but if you have a question for me, I can answer it. Um, I'm not going to linger too long because I like the fact that people can watch this after the fact, so it doesn't really matter if I'm live or not. <laughs> I go live so that I can get questions from folks, and if there's not a lot of folks to get questions from, then that's okay. So. I am going to get started. So today's book, like I said, is Hoop Queens. Hoop Queens uh, is a follow-up to a book I did on men's basketball up here, Hoop Kings. So I did Hoop Kings and Hoop Queens pretty much one right after the other, and I had so much fun doing it. Now, the big difference that I mentioned um, when I did the book on, when I did the uh, read aloud on Who Kings, is that the big difference between the two was that uh, for men, a lot of people know who the players are. So I had to pick players that wouldn't be remembered just for one or two years, but would be remembered for quite a long time. Now the challenge was when I did Who Queens because even though the women are just as talented as the men and just as good. They are just not as popular. So people just don't know who a lot of them are. So it was real important for me to pick players that just had a very unique style of play. So let's get to it. So there's 12 poems in the book, and I'm obviously not going to do all 12. I can't because of licensing issues. That means uh, I can't just read the whole book. I want you to purchase it or check it out from a library. But I am going to do four specific poems. One of them is one that I do specifically whenever I speak at schools. Um, we're not there yet, but I'll, when I get to it, I'll let you know. So let's start with this person, this player, Dawn Staley. Okay. So... The idea for her poem, her poem was called Bounce to This. Now, whenever I was writing about each of the players, what I decided to focus on was I just watched a lot of games of them playing. I watched a lot of videotape of them playing. This was before YouTube was out, so I actually had to really search to find uh, these players. Uh, there was old uh, DVDs that the NBA did. Um, video clips I would have to watch. Um, it wasn't as easy as just typing in something on YouTube and then just following it. Let's see. Keika said, I told my own to do that you do. I tell him that he should watch you. He said, yes. Well, I appreciate that, Keika. That's why I always love seeing you there. I love spreading, hearing you spread the word. Um, Dawn Staley. So one thing that I got out of her when I watched her play is that she played with a definitive rhythm. She had a very rhythmic style of play. And so I thought of bounce. When you have that bounce, when you got that bounce in your step, it comes through in your game. So this is called Bounce to This for Dawn Staley. Braids bounce on break as ball bounces from shake and the bait moves. Fueled by Philly funk to five grooves, changing no look passes into easy twos. Handle honed from paying dues on hardwood dance floors in Italy, Brazil, Spain, and France. Rhythmic feet to dance, circles around opponents in basketball sh shoes, moving to the beat of S S Staley's groove. On and on and on and on, bouncing with rhythm till the break of dawn. So that was for Don Staley. 
Next up, let's go to, this is the one that I perform in schools. The Chef. So this player's name is Tisha Pinichero, and Tisha plays the position of point guard. Now, a point guard on a basketball team has the same job as a quarterback on a football team. Their job is to pass or feed the ball to their teammates. So when I thought about that word feed, I said, who is somebody that feeds people? And I said, a cook. Nope, even better, a chef. And chefs have all of these great words specifically related to cooking. So the first thing that I decided to do is I actually watched a lot of Food Network. I watched a lot of cooking shows. I love to cook myself. And whenever a unique word would uh, stand out, I would write it down, particularly verbs. Verbs are action words. So basketball is filled with lots of action. But I wanted to connect basketball action to a different kind of action, in this case, cooking. So I'm going to perform the poem, The Chef. I don't have to read this one. You've already seen the picture. And as I perform it, I want you to take a listen for some of the words that come from cooking and see how I apply them to basketball. The Chef. Racing and running and spinning and swerving in total control while feeding and serving delicious assist with wrist flick tricks. Chef T serves, dishes will slick, style, skill, finesse, and flair, beating teammates while twisting midair, slicing and dicing and shaking and flipping, mixing and tossing and chopping and whipping, no look passes, underhand passes, teaching skip stop, behind the back classes, serving sweet treats, putting points on the board, keeping hungry teammates, coming back for more. You like to cook, Keka? Cool. What's your favorite thing you'd like to cook? Tell me. I'm going to move on to the next poem and I'll, and I'll read it. All right. The next player. The next player is Cheryl Swoops. Now, Cheryl Swoops' poem is a pretty big one because her poem is called All That. Now, for all of these WNBA players, many of you, for the most part, the book is, you know, even though the book is aimed at kids, adults will read it too, particularly teachers and librarians when they're reading it to kids. So they may know who a lot of the players are, but you, the young reader, <clears throat> may not have a clue at all. <laughs> now, Cheryl Swoops, you like to cook breakfast. What do you like to cook at breakfast, Keika? Like waffles, French toast, bacon, cereal, toast. <laughs> what do you like to cook? Um, Cheryl Swoops was basically, during the time that she was playing, was basically the female Michael Jordan. She could do it all. And she was a winner by far. She was on the Olympics. She really was basically the female Michael Jordan because her game was literally all that. So let's do Cheryl Swoops. I used to perform this one in schools, but I used to perform multiple poems from Hoop Kings and Hoop Queens. But as I got more books, I wasn't able to do as many poems. So now it's just one poem per book. But this is Shell Swoops. Let's read all that. Ladies and gentlemen and other spectators, feast your eyes on Cheryl, the trade maker, dribble drive creator, up fake take it to the hole penetrator, the point leader, stat line feeder, last second shot making OT buzzer beater, the board snatcher, bullet pass catcher, charging hard through the lane coming right at you, the lane spinner, Championship winner, coast to coast, off the glass, finger roll finisher, the ball stripper, defense slipper, right side fadeaway net core ripper, the shot blocker, defensive stopper, ball hawk swooping down court, stopping popper, swoops to the hoop, the MVP jaw dropper. Now, as you can see, I had a whole lot of fun writing that one. Uh, when I wrote that one, basically, I started with the ladies and gentlemen because she's basically going to put on a show. So me, I wanted to be the hype man setting you up to let you know that the show is about to start. All right. Last but not least, last but not least, is another player who at the time when she was coming out of college, pancakes, bacon and eggs in a skillet. Ooh, sounds good, Keka. I had a good breakfast this morning. I had a bacon and cheese sandwich. <laughs> Normally I have a really nice healthy breakfast, my oatmeal with eggs, with flax and all of that good stuff. But you know what? I just felt like a good breakfast sandwich. So I made one this morning. The next player is Shamiqua Holtzclaw. 
Now, Shamika Holtzclaw, when she was in college at the University of Tennessee, right before she came out, she was touted as the next big thing. And even though she didn't completely live up to those expectations in the WNBA, she still had a solid career and she had a very unique game. So her poem I called Firestarter. The reason I called her Firestarter is because when she came onto the court, she had this spark. She had this energy that, you know, she was basically like fire and that anybody who tried to guard her or do anything against her will get torched. So I use the full metaphor of fire. So what happens with fire? It has to start. Once the fire starts, it can start slow, but then it can turn into a blaze. What does a fire cause? It also causes smoke. So I made a point of writing those characteristics down that related to fire, and I made a point of using them during the poem. So let's hear Shabika Holtzclaw, fire starter. Board bouncing catches strike acrobatic matches when Shamiqua sparks flame into white hot game. A wildfire spreading that can't be contained. Racing, reversing, leaping and snaking, jumping, twirling, taking and making. Long distance fireballs ignited with spin, burning nylon from baseline again and again. Finger roll finish for last second win, rising and floating like smoke to the rim, blazing a trail with moves that scorch another hot performance from the human torch. And that's it. Four poems from Hoop Queens. I hope you check it out. Now, if you really enjoy Hoop Queens and you really enjoyed Hoop Kings, on my YouTube channel, you can check out a follow along poem. So basically what it is, it's me reading the poem, but uh, the words appear across the screen. So you can follow my rhythm and my cadence. Um, I'm glad to hear you like my poems. I'm glad to hear that you love my poems, Keika. Make sure you spread the word. Tell your teachers, tell your friends. It'd be great to have more than just you and one other person. Uh, but that's okay, because I know lots of people watch it after the fact, you know, but I just like doing them live. It gives me something to do, and it gives me a chance to interact with you guys. Uh, but like I was saying, if you really like Hoop Kings and Hoop Queens, check out the read along, follow along series in a follow along series, I guess we call it, on my YouTube channel where the words appear on the screen and you can follow along to my cadence. So that's it for today. Uh, I will be back again uh, on this Thursday, a couple of days away, reading from The Mighty Twelve, my book on Greek mythology. Uh, it celebrates the Greek gods and goddesses in mythology. Um, this book skews a little to the older audience, and by older I mean like fourth, fifth grade up, which is not necessarily older, but it's older than second and third grade. Uh, but it skews a little towards the older audience. And since that's the case, um, you know, if you got an older brother, older sister um, who you think might be into it, you know, remind them. 10 o'clock a.m. on Thursday, April 23rd. <laughs> and that's it. Thanks for stopping by. See you soon.